Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend this time with me. I'm really excited about what the Lord has put on my heart to speak about today. Today we're going to talk about grace. But before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. You are the Alpha, you're the Omega, you're all that exists. Everything that we do, everything that we don't do is for you and for your glory. We give praise <coughs> and honor and glory to your holy name for all the ways that you're working in our lives. Lord, I thank you for bringing me and whoever is watching this video into this space right here, right now. And we ask that you heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. Teach us what it is that you would like us to know. Not my words, but your words, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you again for bringing um, yourself here into this space. Thank you for watching. Um, I am really excited about this topic, grace. If you hang around Christians, uh, you'll hear them talk about the Lord's amazing grace. In fact, you probably even are familiar with that song, uh, The Lord's Amazing Grace. But what does grace mean? Well, if you scan and do a Google search, you will find so many definitions for grace. So we're going to just go over a few of them and talk a little bit about what the Lord has to say about grace. Um, you'll also find, if you do a count, there's 150 uh the, the word grace um, is in the New Testament 150 times, and in the Old Testament, it is um, 60 times the word grace. So interesting that the Lord has so much to say about grace. So we'll start off with a longer definition. Um, and what is grace? So just take a moment to just kind of settle yourself in, be comfortable, and listen to these words as I read them. So... Um, the first definition of grace is unmerited gift. So it means that we can't earn it. It's a gift of the divine favor from our wonderful Lord in the salvation of sinners. So our wonderful Abba Father loves us so much that he gave us his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. So we're talking about our Abba Father that loves us so much. He gave us, gave us so much grace by giving us his wonderful uh, begotten son, um, who truly came into this world to save us from our sins. And so the divine influence operating in individuals for their regeneration and sanctification. And those are really important words. Regeneration means new growth. Um, you know, if you ever get a wound, uh, your skin regenerates. So we get to regenerate in our wonderful Lord when we develop a relationship with our wonderful Lord, the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us is with us at all times always. And all we need to do is call him right into our heart. And when we can... Uh, develop a relationship with him and believe in him, we truly can trust that he can regenerate us. He, we, he gives us new life in him. And he also gives us sanctification, which means that he brings us to a higher level of living. He brings us to a holiness uh, and helps us to make really good choices. So that's the first definition of uh, grace. The second definition I'd like to go over is a shorter one. It's just simply unmerited favor of God toward men. And again, that word unmerited comes up. It means that we can't do anything to get it. We get it because he loves us that much. We just have to simply ask for it and favor. It means that he gives us his love, light, grace, mercy, and peace. He gives us special gifts as we draw closer to him. I love the definition from the catechism. I, I would say that's probably my favorite. And it says, what is grace? It is favor, free and undeserved help that God gives us to respond to his call to become children of God, adoptive sons and daughters, partakers 
of the divine nature of eternal life. So when we draw closer to him and when we invite him into our heart, he truly adopts us as his children and he truly does give us favor. He gives us help. He helps us in all of our circumstances. And um, as we think about the word grace, we can use that as an acronym. And you may have heard of this before. I know I've spoken about this before in my videos. Grace is known to be God's redemption at Christ's expense. So why are we spending so much time talking about grace? I think it's really because we don't want to take it for granted. We really want to start to develop that ability to feel grace in our lives, that unmerited favor. I want you to think for a moment about your life and your life circumstances. And when you've done something or when you've experienced something that was such an incredible gift that you know you could not have done it by yourself. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the ways that God gives us his favor, <clears throat> his blessing, his help through all that we experience in this world. And so many of us um, may be in the habit of saying grace over a meal. Uh, you may have heard people say, let's say grace. Oh, don't eat yet. We didn't say grace. What does grace mean? Again, in that uh, circumstance, it means that we're praying over the meal. We're praying that the Lord truly give us his blessing, which is God's favor and protection. So a very short prayer that you may have already heard of before, if you're in the habit of praying over your meal or not, it's a, it's a really good practice to get into. And what does that do? When we pray over a meal, we just simply take a pause, take a step back and breathe, invite the Lord into our heart and take a moment to feel his presence and to feel his grace. It also helps to bless the food, to sanctify the food, to make it more holy so that when it comes into our body, we can appreciate it and we can trust that the Lord is giving us favor and blessing. So a traditional grace, a traditional uh, prayer over the meal is simply bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts for which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. So that just may be a beautiful, simple practice for you to experience before you eat your meals, to just take a pause and say a prayer. And you can say that prayer, or you can say any prayer that comes to your heart. But the point is to just simply take a pause, take a moment to connect with the Lord, ask him to bless you, and ask him to bless the food that you're eating. So I want you to take a moment and think about your life for a moment. And uh, I feel like the Lord uh, put on my heart these five steps to think about when we're really wanting to tune into the grace in our lives. And the first step would be to first take a pause, breathe, invite the Lord in, and trust that he's with us, tap into his presence, and see and feel the grace that exists in your life. And that may be through a comment that someone has made or a gesture that someone has done, but just begin to see and feel the grace. It may even be that the wind has calmed or the sun has come out or you have a day off or something beautiful is happening in your life. But just take a moment to feel and see that grace, God's redemption at Christ's expense, his favor, and his protection. So that's the first step. The second step is to ask God for grace. If you're not feeling so much grace, maybe there's something getting in the way of your experiencing his grace. So ask the Lord to push that aside, put that right at the foot of the cross, and breathe in his grace. Ask the Lord to help you to open up your eyes, ears, and heart to fully and completely experience his grace. Ask him for it and ask him to help you to experience his grace. So that's the second step. The third step is to look at your life circumstances and see where you can give grace to others. 
Has someone wronged you? Has someone done something that may have offended you or um, didn't make you feel so happy? Give them grace. Give them unmerited favor. Turn the other cheek and just pray for them in that moment and ask the Lord to help them on their journey and on their day. The fourth step is to become aware of when others have given you grace. Now we're all human. We all make mistakes. We all miss the mark. We all derail. We are all sinners. So when has it been in your life that you've done something that you're not so proud of? It could just even be something small and someone else has walk, walked alongside you. Someone else has given you their love, their support, has given you grace. Just be aware of that. And the fifth step is to become aware of all the grace that you've experienced again and thank our wonderful Lord, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Thank him for the grace that he has given you in your life. So I encourage you to do that as a daily practice. It will help you to feel so much better. So let's go a little bit further into grace and many scholars will agree, many biblical scholars will agree that there's three types of grace. The first type of grace is known as actual grace. And that's where we experience a conversion, a change, a shift from glory to glory. Um, and God moves in us uh, to act for good. So you may wake up on the wrong side of the bed, for instance, but you start to feel the grace of the Lord and you start making really good choices. I know that when my sons were teenagers, I would forever be on my knees praying for them and I would pray to the Lord that they would make good choices. And I would even say to them on their way out, make good choices, make good choices, so that it's just a wonderful opportunity to remember that actual grace is grace that we experience. God re God's redemption at Christ's expense, his unmerited favor, his gift to us because he loves us that much. The second um, type of grace is known as habitual grace. And that's a grace going a little bit deeper. That's the stable and lasting effects in our soul that grace can produce. And it helps us to participate in the divine nature of God himself on a higher level. And it's a reminder that the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit dwells within us. So it's just such a beautiful reminder that if we can develop the habit, just as it says, habitual grace, if we can develop the habit of incorporating grace into our life, it's almost like... Uh, continuing on a path that if we keep walking on that same path, there's a groove, there's a demarcation. As we keep doing the things that the Lord is requiring of us and asking us to do, to make good choices, to be a good person, to give others grace, and to draw closer to him, we will truly feel him drawing closer to us. We will experience more and more grace. And that habitual grace will be something that we will be aware of even on a deeper level as we go through our life circumstances. And the third type of grace is known as charismatic grace, and that's given for the spiritual good of others. Have you ever noticed um, some Bible teachers or maybe some podcasts that you watch or some uh, worship music that you listen to or a talk, a sermon, whatever, you start to notice, wow, that person is so gifted. Well, that's charismatic grace that's given by the Lord. And it's given for the spiritual upliftment of others to help in such situations as preaching, as prophecy, and as healing. So I encourage you to think about those graces and ask for those graces as you go through your life. What are some ways that you can ask the Lord to bring more grace into your life? How can you habitually increase uh, the ways that you're walking with the Lord so that you can feel more of his presence, more of his love, like grace, mercy, and peace, and grace in your life? And where in your life are you noticing these charismatic graces in other people? 
and what might you want to pray for from the Lord that he can give you some gifts of your own as well. So then there's another type of grace, which I really love, and it's all, you know, we're kind of tying a, a thread that's all connected, is, um, and I'm going to start off with a story. You know, I uh, started off my nursing career working in a hospital, and I was working in critical care, and there would be many times that I would be with cancer patients, and they would be going through such horrific times, their, their family, their loved one, but they themselves with all the cancer treatments. And I would meet this incredible person that was so holy, that had their rosary beads out, that had their Bible out, that was praying as they were going through their life circumstances. And they were learning how to incorporate the Lord's grace in their life. And what was so amazing is when this person, I brought this person to um, get an x-ray and she found another person, a very young person, a, a little child about six years old, uh, that was also going through uh, the cancer treatments. And this person said to me, I'm going to give all of my grace that the Lord is giving me to this child. And I'm going to ask in my prayers that this grace that I experience is given to this child from now on. So this child can be fully and completely healed and their parents can be fully and completely supported. And I have to tell you, uh, from this day, I still remember that incredible person, that incredible patient, that she was going through so much, so many horrific experiences herself, and yet she was sacrificing all that she was in her prayer time and all that she was going through for this child that she met because she felt that this child deserved to have the graces that she may be accumulating in her own life. Wow. So that's just such a beautiful metaphor to think about when we go through our life, when we're going through some challenges and some hard times, if the Lord is giving us grace, we can ask the Lord to give our graces to other people. When we are going through, let's say, Lent or a season where we're truly choosing to repent and um, do some penance, and maybe even do some fasting or whatever it is, maybe that you're giving up, a habit that you may be giving up that might be more challenging to you, you can pray to the Lord as you're giving up that habit or as you're making better choices and as he's giving you grace, you can pray for those that you love in your life and you can ask the Lord to give that person graces. Such a beautiful contemplation. That I encourage you to think about this week in your quiet time and in your self-reflection time to think about how it is that you can invite more of the Lord's grace into your life. Ask him for it and how it is that you can give grace to others. So let's go into scripture now and let's hear a little bit more about what the Lord has to say about grace. So in Acts 6, 8, it says, now Stephen a man full of God's grace and power performed great wonders and signs among the people. I love that reminder so much. Stephen is known to be the first Christian martyr. And um, he, was, uh, he was murdered because he was a Christian. And as he was being murdered, he was uh, just focusing on the Lord. And he had his eyes wide open, praising the Lord. And he was asking the Lord to forgive them. And he was known to have the face, such a, an incredible radiant face because he was so full of the Lord's grace. And so it's just such a beautiful reminder that no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through, we can ask the Lord to help us to accept his grace and his love through all of our experiences. In Ephesians 4, 7, it says, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. And apportioned means like to allocate it, to divide it. The Lord is giving all of us grace, not just one person, but everyone he's giving grace to. And I encourage you to 
open up your eyes, ears, and heart and invite him into your heart and ask him for his graces. In Ephesians 2, 8, it says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. I love that reminder so much. There's two important words in that scripture, grace and faith. It's like the two wings of a bird. And let's read this again. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. Actually, saved is an important word, obviously. He's saving us. The more we increase our faith, the more grace that he gives us, the more grace that he gives us, the more faith that we have. So I really want to encourage you to contemplate these words. He saves us as we open up our heart to his grace and as we increase our faith in him. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Amen. So we are encouraged to remember that when life is feeling really hard and we're exhausted and we're feeling very weak, remember that that's when our Lord's grace for us is the strongest. So be open to it and invite it into your heart, particularly in those experiences. In Hebrews 4, 15 through 16, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. This is our wonderful Lord Jesus that we are talking about. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Such a beautiful, powerful scripture that I really encourage you to go through to just remember that our wonderful Lord Jesus was an incredible role model without sin. He went through all that we went through because he was man and God. So he was tempted, but he passed all his tests with flying colors. So we can ask him to help us to be more and more like him every day, especially when we're finding it more challenging. Invite his grace into your heart. In John 1, 16, 17, it says, For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. All of us, not just some of us, all of us. We all have received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So just remembering that when we have that incredible relationship with our wonderful Lord Jesus, he's giving us his grace. He's giving us his truth. He's helping us to live a better life and make good choices. Will you join me in that this week? It will help you to feel so much better. In James 4, 6, it says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Amen. Such a beautiful reminder that he wants us to be in a position of humility. He wants us to remember that he is above us. We are not above him and we're not above anybody. We are just lowly sinners doing the best that we can and remember to stay humble. As we are being humble and as we are in such a posture of humility, we can remember that he's above us and that he is truly giving us his grace. In Romans 6, 14, it says, For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. Remember, our wonderful Lord Jesus died. He was nailed to the cross for our sins. We are so blessed to have him. So right here, right now, I encourage you, if you don't have a relationship with him, or if you've done this a million times, let's do it again together. Let's practice the ABCs. First, we're going to admit that we are sinners, that we've missed the mark, that we've derailed, that we've made mistakes. I'm a sinner, you're a sinner. It's okay. We do the best that we can. Let's just take a moment to admit that, that we're wrong and that we've made mistakes. That's A. B is to believe that our wonderful Lord Jesus died 
He was nailed to a cross because he loves us that much. So we can take all those sins, all those mistakes that we've made, let's put it right at the foot of the cross, right here, right now, and believe that he died for us and our sins. That's B. And then C, commit our life to Christ. So as he takes on all his as he takes on all of our sins, as he is nailed to the cross, we can take in his love, light, grace, mercy, and peace into our hearts as we continue to commit our life to Christ on our day-to-day -day journey in all of our circumstances. And in Titus 2.11, it says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. We are so blessed. Every single person is blessed and is invited. Take that invitation and welcome our wonderful Lord Jesus into your heart. It will help you to feel so much better. And we'll end with Romans 1, 5, where it says, through him, we have received grace and apostleships to call all the Gentiles to obedience that comes from faith in his name sake. Amen. So we are just reminded over and over and over again that he is with us every moment of every hour of every day, no matter where we go, no matter what we do. Invite him into your heart. Invite him to give you his love, light, grace, mercy, and peace. I hope that this message was helpful for you today. I am praying for you every single day, and I ask that you please pray for me too. I would love to hear from you if you have any comments or questions, or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper. I am a clinical pastoral counselor, a nurse, a life coach, and a therapist. I would love to hear from you, and I would love to work with you. You can reach out to me on my website, toolsforliving.net. That's tools, the number four, living.net. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.